All right, so we're gonna be testing out the backwater kit today, so stay tuned. Is my backwater kit broken? I don't think it's supposed to ride like that. Oh well. I guess that's the way she wants to sit for now. But I'll spin it around, back it in the water, and we'll be getting going. shallow that is look at that I didn't have to back the trailer in at all it's amazing what an adjustment on the trailer will do Battery's hooked up, trolling motor's good. Just need our throw cushion and our life jacket. Throw cushion is just something nice to sit on. Got two people throwing some So we're gonna go ahead and start this. I'm gonna make sure the safety kill switch works. Uh, make sure it idles good, nothing's rattling weird. It's mounted on the are good. Make sure every bolt is tight. And then um, once we get the engine warmed up, everything seems to be going good, then we'll open up the throttle and let her eat. Um, so once we get all that done, we get it warmed up, we'll start getting into higher speeds. We'll see where that cavitation plate or the right plate is. And um, we'll start shimming it if we need to, or if it's good where it is, and then we'll leave it. So get the engine warmed up, make sure everything works good, and then um, we'll start dialing it in. I'm going to go ahead and pull the safety kill switch. Make sure the push button on it works. Alright, awesome. Probably should have started this and done all this while not on the water blast. I didn't get gator tags this year. 
this is definitely going to take some getting used to. But as of right now, the one thing that I don't think I can fix is the handle. Uh, if you're going to sit on the bench seat, you're going to be all... Uh, the boat's going to sit real weird because you got to sit off to one side. Alright, so I'm going to reposition the camera and we're going to start running it to see how it uh, handles. I also just switched around that pin because that pin does supposed to or is supposed to go towards uh, the rear so that way you can lean it back but my engine wants to lean forward so I don't know what the issue is there as I said this mud motor will get some taken used to a lot different than a tie long tail I right. we're gonna get you situated and then I got to get situated and then we's gonna run it I got speed here on my phone that's how I'm going to do speed, and that's how I've always done speed. Uh, the GoPro should also pick it up on the back. And then, um, yeah, so uh, engine should be warmed up by now. Get the kill switch on. You guys got two views as of right now. It's going to be from the back so you guys can see the ride plate and where it rides in the water. And then you got a POV of me person of view of what I'm looking at so that's what y'all will see um, just so you guys know what's going on uh, this is a safety kill switch you have a push button and a pull so you can pull that and it also works this is your throttle lever it stays there it's a static throttle lever idle speed full speed um, definitely something to get used to don't know if I'm gonna like it or not um, Everything else is pretty much the same for the boat and the layout. Um, I do have to get my push pull away, or my anchor pull. Um, everything should be good to roll. Let's see what kind of speeds we can get out of this. Alright, so this is the backwater test. Water test, uh, ride plate without any wedges. Look at that gator. Silly dog. And also, I don't think I'm going to sit and operate this either. It's an old tie trick. So, this is what I'm talking about when you sit like this it's goofy the boat sits this way because the handle just it's in the way it's not offset cut out like that unless the kill switch pulled maybe maybe I hit the kill switch
how much vibration that has. Hopefully shimming it will make a big difference. Man. That has a lot of vibration in the handle. And I think the highest speed I saw on there was 15 miles an hour. I can confirm that on the GoPro, you guys already know. But, um, let's spin it around and uh, shim it. It was diving deep, and it wasn't riding right on the surface where they like to have it, so uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, shim it so that it doesn't dive as deep. have to tie this down or something. Perfect. Get out from under it. Trapped. Just in case you guys don't recognize me. So one thing to make sure to bring with you on your first ride or trip is the extra bolts that were on your uh, tail that hold the uh, ride plate in. There should be two extra long ones. So you gotta use these. Yeah, I'm not a big uh, fan of it locking in place like that. Maybe one of those great things on paper, but maybe I'm too used to the tie kits, but. Okay. Okay, I can work with this. Okay, so. Oh man, it's got grease all over the boat. In your boat bag, you should always have, well, if you're a YouTuber, you got GoPros and GoPro batteries, speaker. You should always have tools. Always have tools and a spare prop, that's always good too. So, got all that. Now, I doubt that I have the correct uh, size for those bolts, but maybe I do. Biggest one I have, just so you guys know, an 8 inch and a 10 inch is pretty much what your Predator engine is put together with. So carry those with you. And then I have a set of Allen keys and a spare uh, spark plug. And an adjustable. Adjustable will save your life. Of course, it's not a 10 millimeter. And it's not an eight. So we're just gonna go with the adjustable wrench. So real quick, this is too steep of an angle because it's wanting to dive into the water too much. If we put this in here, that'll increase the angle because your thick part is going to push up on that end and you're going to increase the angle. We don't want to increase it, we want to decrease it. So we want to bring up this side. So we're going to flip it around and do this. We're just going to do one uh, shim and see where it goes. If it's too much, then we'll end up breaking this in half and using half a shim. So for now, we're just going to keep one shim, undo these four bolts. That's why we didn't blue lock tie them in place. And then once we get this in here, We'll see where our holes are, and then um, make it work. Ooh, it's a little tricky. But you see how this isn't lining up? So that's, ooh. So we can't slide it up, so we're gonna slide it down. I don't know what that does to our holes. It's on there, it ain't going nowhere. So, we got our shim in there. And now we'll run it again, see if it wants to keep diving or not. So put our tools away, put the instructions away, get the other shim away, set up all the cameras again, and then we'll run it. So one, two, three, go.
All right, so test drive number two. We are going to see how it runs. We got the new shim in there. Get my speed app open. So this still idles around four miles an hour, which is what my Swamp Runner idles around at. may not see or be able to hear me but this does ride fine like it handles good but this vibration is awful my tie kit does not do that
Well, the way it's running, that ride plate is riding right where it's supposed to. I don't know. I am going to change this just so it drops down further. It's freaking hot. Alright, so we just finished the uh, the first water test. I'm going to be testing this a lot more, playing with it, trying to get used to it. Um, first water test didn't go as good as I would have hoped. Um, I did get it dialed in and it is running. It's just not to the standard that I would have thought it would have been. Um, it went 15 miles an hour. That was the top speed that I got out of it. I would have hoped for more. And I also have a lot of vibration. Um, I do have the ride plate correctly level when it rides. The ride plate is right above the water. You got um, the curve and then you got two uh, sides that are flat. Those two flat ones are in the water while the, the big cavitation plate is uh, above the water. So I think it's riding correctly. I'll double check on mine, but I believe I have it dialed in correct. Um, so 15 miles an hour. This handle always keeps on to fall forward. Um, I can't keep enough tail weight on it to keep the tail in the water. Um, sometimes on a, it's really calm right now, but if I get any type of current or if you're moving, that water's gonna catch that cavitation plate and it's gonna knock your handle forward and it always just sits forward. So even if I keep it all the way back like this, there may be a current or something that catches it and this will just fall down. So it gets really annoying there. Um, so that's the first water test. It doesn't go as fast as I would have liked it and it actually handles worse than my dialed in long tail. Um, so we just need to figure out uh, how it handles weeds. If it, I know I've watched um, uh, CK. I forget his name, but I know his, his initials are CK. Love his videos. He made a great video with his backwater going through a bunch of stuff. He's a hardcore dude and he, he looks like he's pretty awesome. Um, he has an awesome channel and uses the backwater kit, but for my boat and the way that it's set up, this handle is not uh, the best length. It, when you're sitting down you're choked up on it if you're idling this really wants to dig in the water so if you're in between idle speed and you're not planing yet you're just plowing then this really digs in the water but as soon as you get up on plane that's when it levels out and um, it handles a lot better once you're on plane but when you're in between idle and plane when you're in that plow mode it's harder to control that it really wants to dig and it um, it's harder to get that prop up out of the water because you're pushing that big flat disc up against the water trying to get it to the surface and it's actually pretty hard to get the prop up out of the water um, so just this falling forward that just it's really starting to annoy me more and more as it happens um, throttle lever is not that great um, as you can probably tell when I'm driving it it's it's still weird to me. The best way that I found to handle it is to push down with my thumb and pull up like that. And that seems to be the most comfortable way. Um, other than that, it's like a two handle operation where I'm using both thumbs to keep it down. You could probably adjust it on your engine to where it is a static throttle. Cause I have my engine set up to where it resorts back to idle. It's just a loose throttle. So whenever there's no pressure on it, it floats back to idle. It's like it's a good safety feature to use and to have. Um, so this doesn't always stay static at a full throttle. So maybe if you kept your engine at full throttle, the uh, controls would be easier. But I don't like having a static throttle because if something happens to you and you don't get to knock this into idle speed, it's on full throttle whether this is going everywhere or however it's handling. 
and um, that's just one negative. One positive that I do really like about this kit over the tie long tail kit so far is this kill switch. You got a push button and that's awesome and then uh, of course the pull cord. That, that's the same on the tie but the push button for stopping it, I really like that. Um, the grip seems pretty sturdy. Um, just a lot of vibration in this handle. I don't know if it's the prop, if it's the engine, or what's happening there, but a lot of vibration in this handle. Um, the longest I've ran it for is 15 minutes, and it's still, um, it's rough on your hands. So I did have to shim it. Uh, the cavitation plate at the beginning was uh, diving a little bit, so I did use one shim. That brought it up to level at uh, planing speed. It keeps it the right plate right where it's supposed to. So one shim did me good. Um, I could have gotten away with using all four of the short screws, but I did use one long screw and then three short screws. Uh, that, I believe, is a 3 8 inch screw, so keep that on your boat with you when you bring your extra screws and your, uh, your shims. I also brought the instructions, but I guess the instructions do not tell you how to adjust your back ride plate there. I just remember online and just using some common sense knowledge that um, you're gonna wanna how to level that out. Um, other than that, the next few videos are gonna be scattered. I'm gonna be using the backwater, doing some product reviews, um, doing a bunch of sort of things that you may be interested in. So if you wanna catch that, I may be uploading uh, I always upload Saturdays and then you may catch a random video during the week if I upload it So that's gonna wrap up our first water test for the backwater. I'm definitely not done with this um, I'm definitely gonna try to make it work uh, See if I can improve the speeds at all talk to backwater see what they recommend, but um, I'm gonna keep running it and see how it does. I do have to test it in the weeds see how it handles grass and heavy vegetation once we test some vegetation, maybe we can improve the speed somehow, but I definitely got to talk to Backwater to see what they recommend. So for now, if you like the channel, you like what's happening here, uh, please subscribe. If you like this video and you want to see more of this, click that like button, and um, I'll keep pumping them out for you. So thank you for watching. This is JT Gator.